so the people presenting now, uh, but they will actually present something, a technology breakthrough that will, might and will help us uh, transition into a lower carbon future. Please give them a warm hand here. Yeah. Hey. Well, a Swedish climate dashboard gang, that's you. It's an amazing, uh, amazing innovation that will be presented here, and I'd like to introduce you first. We have with us here Thomas Schalit, and Thomas, are you from Map Launcher, and we have Jonas Alrup from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency, and we have Linda Söder, Linda Söder's strategy advisor from Vattenfall. And uh, you have a special table here, and the floor is yours to introduce us to the Swedish Climate Dashboard. Can you get that? Thing? Thank you. The past year, I have gone from having climate anxiety close to paralyzing to actually feeling more hope and energy than ever. And that is not because the situation for the climate is looking any better. But it's become so clear how I share the concern and sense of urgency with people at all levels of government, of cities, of companies, and so many people are prepared to act in new ways. Um, I used to work as a consultant for helping organizations with agile transitions. So what's agile? Basically, it's how you build a company that, or company or organization that is good at uh, solving complex projects. Um, the principles are, are, uh, are pretty simple. If you want a company to solve a complex project, you can't do it by writing long, long, detailed plans and then sending out meticulous instructions to all the people involved. Because by the time you've written the plan, all the circumstances will have changed anyway. You have to find a different approach. So instead, you build an organization we have small, nimble, autonomous teams that approach the problem from different directions simultaneously. But you make sure you have a rhythm, make sure they synchronize and align continuously along the common goal. So you try, you try to build organizations by making sure you're sharing the common goals and also making sure it's easy for all the involved parties to align and communicate with each other continuously. As a consultant, I was, I was doing pretty okay. But I had a problem. The anxiety was eating me. And an uncomfortable realization. If this agile thing is so good, why apply it to helping companies get slightly better profit margins instead of using it for the most important complex projects of all, the transition of a nation to fossil-free economy, a fossil-free energy system. So, I was thinking, what if one looks at Sweden, just entire Sweden as one big agile project? Um, what would happen then? So, I decided to quit all my clients, except for one, Vattenfall. But then I had a dilemma. Sweden wasn't actually asking for my help. <laughs> so, I pretended. I just pretended that Sweden was my client, and I do what you do when you go to a client first time. You say, okay, let's try and build a big picture of the situation. Let's try and see what's happening. This is uh, Sweden's plan for the transition of the transportation sector. Actually, it comes with some of these as well. This is lots of good stuff. I see some of the horses in here. There's lots of, no lots of good knowledge in here. However, this isn't very easy to act on. It's not that digestible. Is there a way to sort of break this down into more tan something more tangible, smaller pieces that you can work with? 
So I took this, scanned it, paused it, massaged it, put it into a database, visualized it, and did a first version of a big map of Sweden's transition. I'm not going to go into any details here. But basically, it's taking these books and summarizing them, seeing here are the missions we have, here are the strategies to try and solve them, using less energy, using alternative energy, using less energy by changing tra transportation modes, by being more efficient, and then the hierarchy where you go down into the parts. And, well, you don't see here, but the camera sees. All, there's lots of yellow post-it notes here. And that is all the collected policies and actions taken by government. So it's actually possible to sort of get a big picture. So I took this and I went to my last remaining client, Vattenfall. Yes, and at Vattenfall we immediately saw the potential of this. Uh, but our first idea was actually to use it for our own work. Uh, we were mapping the climate transition for Sweden, and this was an excellent tool for us uh, both to communicate both internally but also externally. However, <laughs> that would only give us the Vattenfall view of the world. And we already knew pretty much about that already. So we thought, what about if we could get the view of Sweden? What if we could see all the different actors, what they were doing, and also get an updated picture continuously? Uh, and then we realized we are lacking this picture today. And we thought, well, now we can help actually put one in place. And as many have talked about before, we have also understood that collaboration is the only way to tackle this enormous task that is the climate transition. Uh, and people often ask me, Vattenfall is a company, so why are you doing this? But for me, the answer is pretty clear. Uh, Vattenfall exists to become fossil free within one generation, and we are also in a position where we can help other sectors to fossil freedom. Uh, electrification is one of the main solutions in, in some of the sectors, like transportation and also industry. But to be able to help, we need to understand our new playing field. For us, this is the only way to become the energy company that survives in the transition and also that our customers want. So what did we do? Well, we basically took Tomer by the hand, the startup and the large corporation, and we went and we knocked on the doors of government agencies. So we talked to the Swedish Climate Policy Council, we talked to the Energy Agency, Fossil Free Sweden, and also the Environmental Protection Agency. So this is where the Swedish APA got interested, obviously. Uh, because we are also one of these instances that is writing all these reports. Uh, and we are trying our best to get this information out there. Uh, but in the long term, we realized that maybe this tool can actually help us save time. If we integrated this in our day-to-day -day work, maybe we can use this tool in order to actually replace some of these reports that we are writing actually right now. So what we did was to set up an agile pilot. Uh, Tomer and I and also experts from, from these four government agencies. An agile pilot, you say, what is that? Well, it basically meant that we locked ourselves in a room three days a week for six weeks. You can see part of the work here, especially our colorful post-its. So we basically took this and also this, and we placed it all over the walls. And in parallel, we turned this one into a digital tool that you see here to the left. And the pilot was successful because the dashboard clearly fulfills the need for, for the stakeholders. Uh, we, and, and most importantly, we have also experienced already how it has given us valuable feedback on actually policy content. The Swedish climate dashboard uh, is the current frame of the Swedish climate plan right now. Uh, the, way, the way onwards made by Swedish government, the agencies, 
the business sector and the NGOs that we have in Sweden. It is all the reports and analysis that we had made so far to make Sweden a fossil-free nation. It is a platform for dialogue for all these actors that are striving to this goal. Uh, so the point is not to make a tool that shows the exact emission reduction potential. And this is quite important. But let's see how Sweden is doing so far. So this is the actual tool. It's a website. It has four layers of information. In the top, you can see the greenhouse gas emission that Sweden emits in one year. It's about 53 million ton. In the next layer, you can see the solutions to reduce this emission by 2045. In the third layer, trends. Here we show how we can actually do that. And in the final layer, policies that will tell us how to do it. So, I will give you an example on how this works. Here we can see that Sweden has one third of emission from transport. We have one third from the industry sector. And in the last third, we have emissions from agriculture, the energy sector, and so on. But let's have a look on the transport sector. This one is divided into three subcategories. We have pas passenger transportation, which one is the biggest one. And then we have freight on road. And in the last part, it's domestic navigation and shipping. So let's have a look on passenger transport. Now it comes to the second layer of the tool. And this is actually the exciting part, because this is the part when you need to remember that this is not the exact truth. It is the, it's this the guess, best guess that we have right now based on available information. The, the whiff of the solution is the actual reduction potential. Uh, so here we can see that we have two solutions. We have energy efficiency and renewable fuels. Uh, and the last stripe part is the emissions that we will have left after 2030. So let's go to energy efficiency. Here we can see that we have two different solutions. Transport efficient society and improved energy efficiency. So if we look on transport efficient society, we can see that we have three more solutions. There we have reduced travel with cars, we have efficient transport, and reduced need of travel. So if we look at the ones that have the highest potential, reduced travel with cars, it goes down to increased share of public transportation that is more efficient and attractive. That one has the great uh, highest potential to reduce that emission. So on we if we click on this solution, we can see the proportion of journeys made by public transportation. The blue line shows the current share of journeys made by transportation right now. The red line, this one, shows the potential uh, no, the proportion needed to reach the reduction potential for this solution. So the trend reflects the potential of the measured solution. These red, uh, green or red signs shows uh, if we are below... Oh, oh, sorry, you can click on that technical pause. Uh, the sign shows if we are below or over the target. So here we can see that we are below the target with 29%. And if we scroll down a bit, we can see the last layer of the tool. These yellow notes represent policies. In the first row, we have policies that are implemented. In the next row, you will see the planned policies. And in the row after that, you will see the suggested policies, and so on. So these policies shows a hierarchy that 
trickles upwards. So basically what you have here is a complete overview of Swedish climate policies that we have right now. And remember, uh, the, what you see here um, is a space to share a common picture. It is not a plan. Uh, it is a dashboard for dialogue, because the plan needs to, to update continuously. Uh, and I also want to point at some things we haven't talked about. The small pink nose, I'm not even sure that you see them, but there are a couple of them. And those are actually actions and suggested policies for NGOs and corporations. And this way, we create the common language, where you can see both what the government does and also what other actors do. Uh, and what I want to point out with this is actually the more actors that actually get involved with this, the more interesting this, this uh, visualization becomes. So as Linda is saying, this is a, a digital platform to drive collaboration between all stakeholders in society, between government, between cities, between citizens, so that we can share, have a shared picture and constantly realign it. So this is, of course, Sweden's view. This is a platform, a digital platform that can be used for any country, of course, viewers. Um, and we will launch this in Sweden uh, in the spring of 2019, so pretty soon. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much. Inspiring, fascinating, and of course, I'd like to know what are your hopes now for 2019 for the Climate Dashboard? Do you want to start? Um, I think there's so many good ideas, and we're talking policies now, but it's also policies and solutions, and as we know, policies and solutions have to work together and strengthen each other. So by ha being able to have more of a shared picture, we'll get that convergence of things mm -hmm. strengthening each other faster. And I think we'll see, we'll see that starting to happen. That's my hope. Let's take some Twitter questions. Let's see if we can find something interesting. Morten, backstage here, pop, pop one up for us. Here we go. We're somewhere in uh, Germany. Um, you turned this paralyzing climate anxiety uh, uh, in, in the agile skills into mapping Sweden's climate emissions and tools to reduce them. No, that wasn't a question. <laughs> that was just a sort of a, a praise. Let's get another one. No. <coughs> Maybe I can click on it. No, Morten does that. Let's take another Twitter. Maybe I have to close it. It's not interactive for me. Let's circle around. See, they're all over there. They're in Australia. We're in South America. This is fascinating, huh? Let's see. Let's take another question. Mm -hmm. uh, excited to join the We Don't Have Time Climate Seven question. What is the best way to climb to compensate? Well, that was maybe not the question for you at the gap uh, at the uh, the dashboard people. So let's, you'll get more specific que questions afterwards. I'll just pop another one from, 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 from my, my, uh, my notes here. Um, would it in really be possible to sort of implement the entire world on this dashboard? Why what not? do you say? Why not? That's a great, qu great answer. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> All right. So by this, why not, I conclude your session here and best of luck to you. Linda Söder from Vattenfall, Jonas Allerup from the Swedish Environmental Protection Agency, Thomas Schalit from MapLauncher. Wonderful Thank work. Thank you. Thank you.